Um, the reason that we're doing this event tonight is because, as you all probably know, um, we're living through a really extraordinary time for trans people. Um, we've actually got a lot of legal rights for trans people in this country, thanks to Christine Burns and, and, and dedicated campaigners like her and Stephen Whittle. Um, but um, something that I don't really feel that we've talked about is trans people's happiness. And I believe that that's something that's really important. And I believe that as people from marginalised social backgrounds, um, we do face more of a struggle. We have, we're more likely to face mental health issues. Um, and I think that this question of happiness, we're not going to tell you how to be happy tonight. We wouldn't, wouldn't presume to do that. Um, and, you know, these are eternal questions that everybody is trying to answer, right, as, as, as we go through our lives. But I think for trans people, I think it's fair to say that we probably have more hurdles to jump over, you know, before we can find peace and contentment. So what I really want to explore tonight is, um, you know, how can we remove some of those hurdles, what the hurdles are? And really key to that, uh, I believe, is allies. And that's why I'm really pleased that Peter and Owen are here tonight. So for me, yes, we need to get people to mix. But above all else, we've got to organise from below. We've got to build broad movements that can overcome the structural oppression that defines our society, not just scars our society, defines our society. So yes, let's mix. Let's overcome those barriers. But above all else, let's organise in the best traditions of our common shared movement, the LGBT movement, because the only way we're going to get freedom, liberation, rights, whatever you want to call it, is by organising together as activists. So that's what I think. Education is the key. Uh, schools have a crucial role to challenge all forms of prejudice. Not just homophobia, biophobia and transphobia, but racism, misogyny, disabilism, all the different prejudices that young kids will often be exposed to. Now, we all know that no young person is born prejudiced. Kids become prejudiced because of the bad influence of adults or their peers. Early education in equality and diversity, say from the first year of primary school onwards, throughout a child's school life, I believe can help combat that. And we know in some schools where it's been trialled, it does have a very good success rate. So I would say that making trans issues part of that education in equality and diversity, and having trans people come into school to speak to kids like I do and many others do, that's really, really pivotal. And, you know, it makes me think of um, Harvey Milk's campaign back in the, uh, the sort of genesis of the gay rights movement in, um, you know, 1970 San Francisco, where he, he, one of his sort of campaign tactics was to call upon people and say, you know, you might have a friend or a brother or a postman or a, someone, you know, that you see every day who is gay, and that changed people's perceptions and it sort of opened their minds as to you know that these people were out there and and they could just be you know sort of unseen friends obviously with trans people it's not that easy because there are so few of us i think it's something like 500,000 in the uk in a in a population of 63 million so obviously there aren't enough of us to go out and meet and greet at all the schools but it would certainly be i don't know an idea i mean obviously things like this are really helping in a huge way what do you think? What do you think is keeping trans people from being as happy as, or, or having an equal I do, I do chance really of think, being as I happy? I do think that the fixed society thing that is that, that is the case. It's um, the perceptions of other people and the misconceptions of other people that are the big, big, big barriers to get past. And it's hard. It's very hard to kind of block out the noise, especially in the beginning of your transitions. Um, it can be quite lonely. So. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely other people's perceptions that are the hardest thing to get past. Obviously, I think that when from a very young age, um, you know, I knew when I was three and when I think people are sort of saying to you from, from that age when you know something so certainly and people are saying, no, don't be so silly and, you know, this is going on and on in your formative years, obviously that's something that you're going to sort of squash down and that, that is something that will stay with you. But no, there's certainly nothing within trans people generally I wouldn't have thought that m meant that we were particularly miserable or no. I think it's just you know again it's it's about society and how we're perceived and how we're squashed down and again this is you know becoming a lot better through things like this and you know Louis Theroux's going off to America and talking to the trans children and so on I mean little steps but I think you know if we could make it easier for the new generation of trans children then I think trans people in the future will become a lot happier and won't be perceived as quite so sad possibly um 
I was on the subway in New York and I'm always like, I feel like I dress like a tramp. I'm in my army coat and my big bag and my bag's really heavy and I'm on this crowded subway. And this um, lady was looking at me and staring at me. I think she was an Indian lady and she was staring at me. And I was just thinking what she was thinking about how she was judging me. And then eventually I caught her eye and she smiled at me and she said, would you like to have my seat because your bag looks really heavy? I was so ashamed of how I'd been judging her. So the bigotry is for me to other people and the barrier is in my head. And I, once I've stopped thinking about that, I take responsibility for my own life and everything around me. Um, do, you, do you think that we kind of, um, as minority people, kind of shame each other sometimes? Monroe? Oh, absolutely. Um, the whole notion that you only pass as much as your least passable friend as well. I mean, that's so... Like, I, mean, I see that so much and it's so wrong. Um, but also kind of the whole notion of passing is terrible. Um, it's not about passing. It's your, a successful transition isn't looking like the gender that you're transitioning to and like look, no one having a clear that's not a successful transition because if you're not happy with yourself then that's not successful successful transition um and i've learned this myself um is being happy with yourself and living um a successful life being happy with yourself um and it doesn't it doesn't matter like it doesn't really matter how you look um but Maybe we could ask the panel what, what makes you happy. Owen Jones, what makes you happy? For me, it's just constant, unrelenting optimism that however difficult and however traumatic and however problematic life can often be for so many people, however unjust and unfair and unequal our society is, all of these injustices will be overcome and it will be overcome because all of us stand together because our strength together is far greater than if we stand apart. So that's it. Optimism, hope, courage, determination. All these problems will be overcome. I love, I love you, Owen Jones. This is meant to be really frivolous. What makes you happy? How do we like, follow that? <laughs> um, I think as trans people, it's um, it's very easy to kind of feel like you're always waiting for something, and like you're waiting to change, or you're waiting, um, you know, just waiting for the day that you feel happy. And I think for me personally, the thing that made me happiest was just realizing that I'm enough, and that I'm I am enough, and I'm worthy of happiness. Um, so I think really that that's for me that that was what turned it for me. You're so worthy. I wish all the good things for you, Monroe. Thanks, Kara. <laughs> Um, what makes me happy again is, is yeah being here tonight, obviously, and the fact that we're able to do things like this, which I think even two or three years ago would never have happened. Um, the fact that you know Monroe and Paris's video, which is basically aimed at you know cisgender folk, what you want to ask trans people, that you know you you probably shouldn't. The fact this has had four million hits really does show again to to reuse the term the tipping point. It shows that people are really opening their minds, that people want to learn about trans people, want to learn about our experience. You know the fact they're about to, to have a trans character on EastEnders, the fact that uh, trans film is, 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 you know, exploding across the world. All of these things make me happy because it shows that, you know, regardless of anything else, things are changing. And I think we will look back on, on things like this and videos like yours and Caitlyn Jenner on, on Vanity Fair and realise that, you know, we are a massive part of history and, and a huge turning point. And um, that's why I'm happy. Um, I think I'm really naive and I just... I'm naive that I just believe that everyone is a nice person and everyone is a good person. And, and what makes me happy is that when, when I suffer some bigotry um, and take the time to connect with that person, um, what makes me happy is when we become friends um, or, you know, well, yeah, when we become friends and it, it reaffirms that to me that everyone is a nice person and we just, sometimes we just need to take the time to connect with the people who we might feel are our enemies um, and yeah that's what makes me happy <laughs> Peter I know you're going to have something serious to say but <laughs> I, I know you work so hard I literally don't know how you do it your your commitment is 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 just in, in literally insane um, and uh, I would I'd love to know what fills you with joy on a frivolous level in addition to whatever sensible thing you've got to say <laughs> it may not be suitable for a public audience so. <laughs> even better um, 
What makes me happy is that when I first began campaigning for human rights in 1967 in my hometown of Melbourne, Australia, there were so many things wrong. The way the indigenous Aboriginal people were being mistreated, and they still are to some extent. Um, Australia's involvement in the unjust, immoral war in Vietnam, the mass indiscriminate bombing of civilian populations, and of course the mistreatment, the criminalization, the persecution, the medicalization of LGBTI people. So when I look back and I can see the changes, you know, we haven't got there by a long shot, but there have been phenomenal changes. Changes which I barely, well, I did imagine them, but I didn't really think I would see in my lifetime. And to see the change in public attitudes, laws, not just for LGBT people, but for black people, for women, for disabled people, for many different marginalized communities. Um, we aren't there yet by a long way, but boy, we have made changes. And what makes me happy is to think that I was so privileged to be part of that movement with not tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands and millions of people worldwide that we together collectively have made the world a little bit better. So for The Guardian to be hosting this event, for all these happy, shiny people to be here and esteemed allies, um, really makes me really very happy because I genuinely believe that although it's it's still so terrible, although there's still so much to do and, uh, and you know, this panel isn't perfect, we've come such a long way. This really is happening now. And um, the thing that makes me happy is knowing that I will live to see the change um, or, or die trying, and it may well kill me yet. So um, thank you all so much for coming. I hope that you've had a good time and that we've, we've added to your happiness a little bit. Um, so, yeah, give, give yourselves a big round of applause and give our speakers a round of applause. Thank you. Be happy.